AMIO Centers, Cynthia Hetherington, founder and CEO of Osmosis Association. I'm super excited to be invited by Authenticate to talk about OSINing up. And I'm joined by many other excellent experts and real leaders in this industry. Uh, they asked me to speak for about 20 minutes about OSINT professionalization through certification, which I'm a huge advocate and very excited about, as is the entire association. Uh, Going to keep this pretty straightforward and simple. I don't believe in making things complicated like taking tests and running certification programs. The, the world of OSINT is a, a real interesting one. <clears throat> I never believed in certification. In fact, I'm a certified fraud examiner from the ACFA. And I thought back when I was actually a faculty member in training form and didn't have a CFB after my name, that it was absolutely ridiculous for me to have to go after a certification because I had two graduate degrees. And I said, I think that the, the extension of training and learning based on academic credentialing is going to supersede this certification that you're asking me to get. And they very much patted me on the head and said, that's very nice, Cynthia, but we need you to take the certification if you're gonna to continue to teach for us. I was like, fine, I'll go and take that certification. First of all, I loved it. We went through a week long exercise of understanding the different types of questions and queries that were gonna come up on the exam. And it had three major parts to it. It was accounting, legal, and fraud. There was a lot of reading and exercise and experience required. It was pretty rigorous as it should be. And I found the entire exercise uh, challenging, but also rewarding. In the end, when I won or got that certification, it still hangs on the wall. It's well over 10 years old now, and I'm very proud of the accomplishment. What happened after, which was real interesting, was that phone calls started coming in a lot more and cred credibility started being assumed and credentials were just established. And I thought, well, I'm really not anything more than I was the week prior getting these extra letters after my name than when, uh, than when you called me after. But the aha moment to me was even more than that. I got on a phone call with a law enforcement organization and they asked me to come out and train and I, I hadn't met them. They didn't know me, I didn't know them. And I thought, well, sure, you know, like got all this experience. I could teach you open source intelligence. I've got great credibility. I've taught all over the world. I've, you know, me, 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 right? And the, uh, the law enforcement officer very bluntly said on after, you know, as I was going through and I was like, well, he goes, well, you got all those letters after name. It must mean something. And uh, I had a giggle about it. And I was like, no, it genuinely doesn't mean anything. It means I could take a test or I pass the class. It doesn't mean that I am any greater or worse, more or less than prior to that. But maintaining those letters and continuing the education and continuing the journey and stepping into the gravitas that the letters give you is what keeps you at a level that's just above a hobbyist. We're all hobbyists right now. In my estimation, there is no nonpartisan certification in open source intelligence in the market. Everyone that's out there, there's excellent testing and, and the people with the certification that have it now are great tradecraft practitioners, but they're all tied to a company or an organization that is getting something back for something that they give. Not just, hey, you took the test, but you took the class. You passed our check, <laughs> you know, your check cashed, and now you've taken a test and have done it. And certainly all these wonderful establishments should be paid for the, the work that they're putting out there, but the credential is tied to the training and that training cost could be quite substantial. What we did at Osmosis is we took the training off the table and I wanna be, crystal clear at this point. You do not need to take anyone's class. You're not required to come to Hetherington Group's class, go to my friends over at this acronym or that acronym. You can learn 
all of your OSINT skills by reading uh, Mike Basil's book, Ray Baker's book, Johnny Long's book. You can watch YouTube videos. You can be the leader of your Reddit board. You can have a rocking GitHub account. You might exchange little messaging on Discord. You can be self-taught. You literally could be self-taught. You could take yourself from here to there and learn everything you need to know. Take the test, take the OSC test, which is what Osmosis will be offering, and pass. Are you going to have to sign up for Osmosis? Yes, you are. Well, gee, Cynthia, that's going to cost something. No, it isn't. Membership is free right now. I can't push this hard enough to get people on board to do this. Does the test cost money? Yes, it does. We do charge for the exam a modest $200 fee. Many of the vendors, like Authenticate, are going to be receiving coupon codes that they could give out to their constituents. So some of you might not even be paying for the exam. I am trying to make this obtainable and tenable by as many people possible so that we can do the one thing we are all desperately trying to achieve, and that is create credibility for O-Centers. The idea that we get ourselves in a place where we are all understanding what open source intelligence means equally and not bickering over not only the pronunciation, which is irregardless, I don't care how you call the acronym, it's what you do with the tradecraft that I care about. So in osmosis, and I'll just share my screen for a second here. For osmosis, what we look at, my little bar over, is first and foremost, our mission, standardizing this profession. We got plenty of words after that, but that's my absolute goal here. I'm going to standardize this profession, and we're going to standardize it by creating certified O centers who are going to carry the message forward domestically and internationally. Let's also not be short sighted by thinking any one country owns this. We, as an association, will also continue to provide support for these members, challenge you, expand your growth, and provide you a community that you can continue to develop your skills. We're talking about bringing in hiring agencies talking to employers and potential employers about what it's like to hire an open source intelligence analyst and how you curate, grow, and expand their possibilities so that they can continually give back to your association, your organization, or your enterprise. How do we do this? We understand that to say that you're going to be credentialing something means you are the host and holder of a body of knowledge. To say any one company or organization owns that is wrong. Osmosis as an association for all OSINT practitioners will be the Tradecraft Library. We will establish a body of knowledge that will continually be curated, updated, weeded. That's my old librarian term. That's when we take the old stuff off the shelf to make room for the new stuff. But we will also archive and consider even some pieces legendary items of antiquity, meaning Wow, Cynthia Hetherington started doing open source intelligence in 1992. I'm an archive at this point. And that's the other reason why creating a trade craft that continually steps outside of one or two people's sense of knowledge and purpose, you know, the people that we give the legacy awards to, certainly deserve the respect. Mike Bazell received the legacy award of osmosis last year. He's a rock star. He leads in this industry. He's carried that mantle on his shoulders for a long time. And you know what? He's also taken all the blows in the industry because he is the leader. It's time for us to all share the benefit and the burden. So why don't we all have a voice in what this tradecraft is? And we're going to do that by professionalizing ourselves in a way where we're recognized as absolute experts and not offshoot hacker characters that you see on TV shows that have funky ponytails. And for some reason, we're all supposed to be wearing versions of leather and spike boots or have cute little pencils. I, I don't know. TV just portrays us looking like a bunch of nitwits. We're, in, we're really business leaders sitting at a table shoulder to shoulder with the leadership 
and the management that runs an institution. That body of knowledge is what's gonna pull your chair up to that table. You being part of a larger organization that can speak to those points and understanding that we're gonna be doing this. And it's all for our mutual benefit. So we're all sharing across the board. As objectives go, they're right there on the website, osmosisinstitute.org. I'm not here to read you our website, but it certainly goes towards the point of what we're looking for about keeping the public informed as well. Now, the certification process helps establish not only ourselves amongst each other and how we call each other, but it also establishes how others from the outside see us. If I walk up to somebody new that I just met and they say, what do you do? And I say, I'm an OSINT analyst. They have no idea what that means. And then when they start getting close to understanding what it means, they're like, oh, you must be in the military. Well, no, there's a lot of us in the military, but that's not exactly it. And then when I'm talking to the folks in the military, they're talking very much in that, oh, you're a PAI, not a PII, and here are your missions and authorities. And I'm like, whoa, you speak a whole other language than I do. Where if I'm speaking to business, merger and acquisition, new business development, others, they're going to talk about outcome, expectations, and outreach. That's not what those guys are talking about. So one association for all of us helps create a platform that we can not only learn and develop ourselves in our own particular silos, but we can expand out and understand what the rest of the community, all of us, are dealing with on a daily basis. Now, as we grow and learn and share, that one commonality is we will all have the OSC. We will all have those initials at the end of our name. So we'll know that we all meet the most minimal but expected protocols of being an OSINT analyst. Those protocols are the things that we look at in our exam. And they're very basic. It's all the training educators, excuse me, many of the training educators in this space got together several years ago. We locked ourselves in one of our offices and we sat across the table and we hashed this out. And I, let me tell you, it wasn't easy because I was sitting there with leadership from the military, leadership from industry, the IC, the, the young and noble you know, ambassador. We had a lot of real experts sitting at the table and I had to stand up and say like, look, let's just make this straightforward. Let's stop overcomplicating and talking in our own jargon. Let's just say, Everything comes in a square. What are the four corners that we truly need to accomplish to say that you're an OSIN analyst? Not that you're the best OSIN analyst, not that you're the most technical OSIN analyst, but that you're an OSIN analyst. And we came up with these four corners. The first corner is incredibly important. That is ethics. That is understanding that we have a legal or ethical requirement for conducting the work that we're doing. We are not permissed to go out there and start reaching into data and pulling it back when, and just because it's accessible. Just because something is accessible does not mean it is permissible in the environment for the client that you're working in. And then a good quick example is, just because I can see breach data out there on a network and I'm working for a customer to find out more about their competitor, and I see I can get someone's email address and password that would easily give me access into a network that I shouldn't probably have access into, should I take it? And we can have a great, and we will have, because we have entire committees devoted to asking these hard questions. And someone might say staunchly no, and someone might say, well, it depends. But then maybe I have another question where I'm talking from the Department of Defense in the US perspective, where I'll say, well, I'm gonna start looking at American citizens because they're tied to the nexus connection of somebody out in China or Russia. And someone is gonna come in and say, absolutely not, you're not allowed to look at American citizens and someone else is gonna say it depends. Because everything is going to have two sides to an argument and the truth is somewhere in between. It's essentially the principle of doing investigations. But in that, we need to know that there needs to be a ethical guideline, something that starts with when in doubt, question. And when questionable, do the least amount of harm. 
we have a committee dedicated towards organizing that thought process and creating something that allows us to go forward in that space. So we require our applicants and our, our graduates of ROSC to have an understanding and appreciation for a ethical guideline, even if it's not the same one across the board. Ethics is your first corner. Your second corner for professionalism is understanding critical thinking. Being able to go and under, under excuse me, overestimate or underestimate a situation in the moment in the context of what you're doing. Why are you doing an investigation? What is the key point to conducting that investigation? What do you expect to get out of that investigation? What is your five W's? And how do you get that quickly in a package understood so that you can go out there and do your research and find your information? Critical thinking, and I would say creative thinking are absolute requirements for OSINT analysts. If you cannot conduct an investigation in a critical thinking methodology, it means you're not really capable of putting lots of data, those hundreds of thousands of points of data that get generated in your collection process through an analytical model to have an outcome for your customer. Even if it's something as simple as doing a background check on somebody and you're filling in the blanks, date, age, name, address. Well, that's not complicated. That's not really critical thinking. Why, yes, it is. It just happens to be an established linear protocol that you're following versus how is Cynthia connected to that vase, <laughs> vase of roses behind her, okay? Where did those roses show up and what are they in connection to Cynthia? Ah, there's a mystery behind those roses too. There's a little Easter egg for you. So unspinning this yarn and knowing how you're going to come at it with a methodology, critical, and a creative thought process for gathering lots of points of data to getting to your data is important. That's your second corner and critical to being a master of this tradecraft. The third one is researching and best practices. We could sit down and do Google searches all day long and we're all using Google. We all love Google. We love Bing, we love AI, we love all these different places. We have our little, little hacks and GitHubs for getting into TikTok videos or knowing how to get through someone's social media footprint. And we can actually do all of that with managed attribution, creating Linux boxes that look like they're coming out of Sweden, but are really bouncing through Tasmania. I mean, there's all the technical applications to doing this. The real, for me, in my opinion, the real piece here in technical know-how, Google dorking and tradecraft is, can you do the job in a limited period of time? If you can't, you might still be great at doing open source intelligence. Again, you're a hobbyist. You don't do this for a living. You're not punching a clock in. You're not billing a client that says we did this in three hours and got it done. Having a good skill set that allows you to perform this work day in and day out over and over again and appreciates the technical mishaps and misunderstandings that could get in your way is vitally important. So understanding the technical corner is the third corner of being an expert and an OSINT analyst. And the fourth, frankly, is product creation. You could Google all you want, but if you can't get your findings, once you found your information, vetted it through your ethical process, dealt with all the technical issues or accomplished all of your goals with good technical prowess, and capabilities, and then you have all these great ideas, how do you put that and relay that to the customer? How does the customer receive it? Do they get a big Word document with key findings and recommended next steps? Do you put a PowerPoint together? Do you have a TikTok video you're making for them? Are you uh, giving them a quick phone call? Is it an email drop? Do you have case management software? How are you pulling this together that it's cohesive? And attached to that, and I don't, I don't care the medium, let's say, I care that you are making sure to put care that 
all of your content is documented. Everything that needs to be cited is cited. And that all of your material is in a good spot where if it's challenged, it could be justified. There will be some work that will be absolutely court ready. You can walk into a courtroom and testify on it. And some of it will be, here's five highlights that you want to know because you only gave me two hours to do the work. But at least you explain that within the document you're giving out. You know, based on our discussion of finding fast and quick answers to your query, here's the five bullets you need to know going into that meeting. That's a product versus based on the query that you sent us and the letter of engagement that we designed, uh, based which was based off of this statement of work and proposal that was crafted over the course of three weeks. Our onboarding process is done. We've created a document with 5,000 attachments known as evidence that will go through the process. You see the two, two far extremes there. They're both a product. I just need to know that you're staying within a point. That's the final corner of being an OSINT analyst is creating something from everything that you're doing, all of your endeavors. So good ethics, critical thinking, best technical practices, good work product. Those four corners are the building block that will start you on your OSC professional certification journey. Once you've accomplished a clear understanding of that, then you are ready to move on to the next certification processes, which are frankly being developed right now. We have a lot of real seasoned tradecraft experts who are bickering and arguing over what that looks like because everyone wants something from their, from their viewpoint and their lens. I am staying agnostic to the whole process, although again, founder of Osmosis. And my, my sense of being apart from it is saying, I need this OSC for you, for your sake. I need you in five years from now to not be questioned by so that person you're meeting for the first time. And when you say, I'm an OSINT analyst, I'm, a, I'm certified in conducting open source intelligence exercises, they look at you and say, oh, great, okay. So this is your slot in this work order. We know what you're working on. This is where we go from here. The OSC is absolutely necessary because Google is no longer the defunct, the, the departure of, can I just get that on Google? Now with artificial intelligence and the manipulation of information that's out there in its vast quantities, we are even more necessary than ever as we not only create good outcomes and answers, but we can then quickly assess information that is being created by artificial intelligence, either put it into a model that we are owning and managing, remember that corner, and then therefore creating good outcomes and final products, or debunking as misinformation and disinformation. We are essentially the experts. That's what OSC means. You are an open source expert and you will withstand all the technical, bureaucratic, political challenges that come at you. And you have osmosis to back you up because you are now part of a much larger family and not operating by yourself in a Reddit or some sort of Chan board where you're talking to five or six really smart and savvy people like yourself. You now have a thousand plus people that you can reach into who are probably also on the same Chan as you. So we are doing this together. This OSC is for you. Professional certification will give you the foundation or will recognize, thank you very much, your credibility and just give you the letters at the end of your name to let you tell people, oh, for God's sakes, if I have to explain my job once again, here you go. I have the OSC. Go to this website. This is what I'll tell you I'm capable of. Thank you very much. Now, please let me just get there and do my job. <laughs> It's what the CFE did for me over 10 years ago, and I've been riding high since then. And I find that these credentials sometimes could feel like they're a heavy burden, but this particular one is designed for the very busy, very overtasked analyst who's doing the job right now. We just need to get you in there, get you certified, get you credentialed, and get you supported as quickly as possible so you can just get back out there doing your excellent work, being the excellent researcher that we know you are, and being 
recognized for that ability in a way that sees your skill set growth, your titles and jobs change, and your own personal revenue benefits. Guys, there's going to be a lot of growth in this field coming up in the coming years. And as you know, I'm always about OSINT for good. This is the good for you. This is from us, from osmosis to you. So do OSINT up. Do keep following the vendors like Authenticate who support us, supporting you. And do keep stepping in and letting yourself get challenged a little bit more. 20 years from now, they'll be talking about you in this space, just like we talk about Johnny Long writing Google Hacks or Mike Basil putting out some of the first best books on this topic. We will be talking about you as being the legions of legacy OSINers who established an entire tradecraft out of being really excellent at what you do. I look forward to seeing you at our events at Osmosis. Again, membership is free. The, the boards are open. The water is fine. Come on in. We look forward to seeing you. And let's see how many of you can tell me where this Easter egg came from. I know. I love a good OSINT challenge. Capture that flag, my friends. I'll see you on the other side.